Hello, my name is Sean Scott. I'm a consultant anaesthetist and I've been on a low carbohydrate ketogenic diet for three years. In my clinical work, I'm mainly involved in the treatment of cancer patients who often present with both a wide range of other conditions and an urgency for surgical treatment that allows little time to improve or optimize comorbidities such as diabetes, hypertension, cardiovascular disease and obesity, each of which adds significantly to the perioperative risks and postoperative complications. Indeed, in other circumstances, these comorbidities may themselves require surgical interventions, for example, vascular procedures, transplantation to relieve organ failure, or bariatric surgery. I can speak to the potential benefits to patients and to me and my colleagues of a low-carbohydrate diet. In surgical patients, the markers of metabolic syndrome improve rapidly on a low-carbohydrate diet. Visceral adipose tissue, for example, belly fat or tongue size, shrink rapidly, which greatly improves the management of airway and breathing during a general anaesthetic. Improved glycemic control during and after surgery lessens the requirement for exogenous insulin treatment. Improved blood pressure control allows for a more stable general anaesthetic. And improving the patient's tolerance of perioperative fasting reduces hunger, as well as the impact of starvation and catabolism. All of these factors potentially improve the risk profile of any major surgical procedure and all need to be studied further. Furthermore, there are benefits to me and my colleagues. We often work for long periods in what is effectively a windowless dungeon. It has been really transformative to not be hangry and to not need to snack during the working day. It's quite clear to me that we can all make use of our ample stores to generate all of the glucose and ketones that we need to feel good. Thanks for listening. I'm Alison Sabine, I'm a consultant rheumatologist and I've worked in the field for over 25 years. During that time there have been many incredible advances in treatment, but there have also been an increasing number of patients with comorbidities that we commonly associate with inflammatory arthritis, such as type 2 diabetes and um, cardiovascular disease as well as fatty liver change. And uh, in the last four to five years, I've become aware of lower carbohydrate diets and the impact these can have for my patients. Many of them have heard about David Unwin's work or come across the idea of uh, lower glycemic index, low carbohydrate diets and have tried these for themselves. And the results have been pretty phenomenal. Uh, as a side effect of uh, the, the uh, change in their diet, they've not only often lost weight where they needed to, but improved their blood pressure, often put their type 2 diabetes into remission. But from my perspective, very interestingly, their inflammatory arthritis has improved too. Um, I've also seen improvement uh, in uh, other autoimmune um, conditions and uh, conditions such as osteoarthritis and uh, fibromyalgia. Um, it's really important that patients can make dietary change and in doing so feel empowered to take control of their uh, situation and not only improving their metabolic health but also their arthritis has been um, incredibly uh, exciting for both them and for me. And uh, as a result, I'm really keen to spread the word and to um, urge people to think about the uh, relationship between those high insulin levels that we get and that we recognise when uh, we have poor metabolic health and chronic inflammation. My name is James Bales. I'm a paediatrician and paediatric endocrinologist in Huntington, West Virginia. I've been in practice for 27 years, and as a pediatric endocrinologist, I would frequently get referred patients who are overweight and are interested in losing weight. The first five years of my practice, I followed the standard recommendations from the American Academy of Pediatrics and placed them on the standard low-fat diet and encouraged exercise. We did a research project, and we found that none of the 75 patients that followed through this approach lost weight. I was surprised because I thought I was doing a pretty good job. At the time, I was working with a medical student who asked me about the Atkins diet. I did not know anything about it at the time, but I did some research and it seemed to make sense. Insulin is the hormone that stimulates fat storage, but insulin is secreted when we eat sugar, not fat. 
So we tried a modified version of this for kids and we saw unbelievable results. The first patient I saw lost 14 pounds in two months. I'd previously never seen anybody lose weight. I've since gone on to have seen over a thousand children lose weight following a similar approach. We see tremendous results with lipid profiles. We see triglycerides drop. Every patient tells me they feel better. They have more energy. They're less hungry. Unfortunately, the kids are fighting school foods, which are loaded with sugar. I've seen over a dozen kids lose over 100 pounds. I've seen hemoglobin A1Cs come from 12 down to 5 in less than 6 months without medication. I will never go back in recommending the standard low-fat diet, which is recommended by the American Academy of Pediatrics. It is just flat out wrong. We need changes from the U.S. Dietary Guidelines to help prevent this onslaught of obesity that we will be seeing, as well as type 2 diabetes. I'm Dr. Mark Kukazella. I'm a professor of medicine at the West Virginia University School of Medicine, also retired from 29 years of duty in the U.S. Air Force. I've been living and practicing low carbohydrate for myself and patients for 10 years now. In my practice, I would do what you would call metabolic rehab because so many of us are metabolically broken. It's a human right to achieve health if that health can be achieved by safe ways and, and ways that we all can do and, and support each other in the community and in the healthcare setting. Um, I believe if we get the science right and the clinical practice right, there is hope. And the world now with obesity, diabetes, even related to COVID is a world sometimes of despair. We have hundreds of patients in my community who have come off medications, uh, reversing these conditions, sharing it with others, sharing it back to their doctors. It's a community of hope. I've been able to publish some patient guidelines on this, um, both for clinicians. This is one we published a couple years ago, low carbohydrate uh, nutritional approaches for obesity, prediabetes, and diabetes. And then we just put this out this year. It's a 50 page patient guide with recipes, low carb on any budget. So really in a couple of thin manuals, clinicians and patients can learn this. Um, we need to give this option to all as an option. Of, we've made some success here and in inroads, which I know across the pond there in the UK, you guys are doing too. And um, we've gotten rid of all sugar sweetened beverages in my hospital. We have low carbohydrate options for patients who come into the hospital, 10 gram carb meals. So we're not feeding them a glucose tolerance test every meal, which they would fail. So if you wanna live your life free of dieting and indulge yourself in health, consider low carbohydrate, learn about it, read about it. Thank you so much for allowing me to be a part of your seminar. Hello, my name is Markus Seemann. I'm practicing nephrology and internal medicine. I'm head of the department of the Clinic of Otterkring in Vienna, which is uh, one of the largest nephrology and dialysis centers in Austria. I'm for myself more than 40 years at type 1 diabetic, became involved in um, low carb uh, treating myself and then uh, treating uh, also diabetic patients, especially patients who have chronic kidney disease. Um, what we have found uh, when we initially uh, offered uh, both low carb and very low carb diets uh, to these patients uh, were phenomenal results. So we saw um, a lowering of the burden um, of their pills because chronic kidney disease patients regularly take up to two dozens of different um, medications. Um, we could even um, go so far as to not only drop the anti-diabetic medicine, but uh, often uh, could even reverse the diabetes. So meaning the patients uh, were not uh, any more dependent on exogenous insulin. They experienced a better well-being uh, more mental clarity. Along with these changes, um, they got better blood pressure, they needed less antihypertensive drugs. And when we did this uh, in many patients, uh, we then said, okay, we want to um, bring this on an evidence-based level. And we started uh, with two prospective trials. And there are new avenues that um, should be taken, such as what is the art, so to say, of deprescribing medications. Um, what do you say uh, to the patients 
what do they have to understand and we go so far as to to explain them that what we aim for is that they bring down the endogenous and of course the exogenous insulin um, needs and nutrition is the most effective way to do this thank you hi i'm bill Patel, consultant interventional cardiologist at manchester cardiac center and this is our cath lab where we treat patients with heart attacks 24 hours a day seven days a week a lot of our patients are either diabetic pre-diabetic or insulin resistant and what we found is giving them the right dietary advice with a low carbohydrate diet can result in a remission of type 2 diabetes in some patients, a reduction of anti-diabetic medication, some patients coming off insulin, and significant weight reduction. By the time they come to us, the horse has already bolted. Imagine what could be achieved if we get these patients before they come to the cath lab table. I find it highly satisfying opening up a blocked blood vessel in a patient having an MI. However, it's as satisfying, if not more, seeing a patient in clinic who has managed to put the type 2 diabetes into remission. It's time to stop papering over the cracks and to deal with the root causes. Thank you. Hi, I'm Trudy. I qualified as a dietitian in 1993. Carbohydrate restriction is safe, it's effective, and more importantly, it's sustainable. We really do have the evidence, the real life evidence, and the know-how to really help our patients take charge of their health. Thank you. Thank you.